Everyone, welcome to the Body Beat Down. Hey, what's going on, guys? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Body Beat Down here, Michael, on this uh, Tuesday uh, late morning. Fixing to be afternoon. It's 11:33 a.m. So. I posted on my community page on uh, YouTube there, or whatever it's called now, uh, that I had a few things that I wanted to talk about and uh, go over. And I haven't rehearsed anything. I don't have anything wrote down except the topics I want to cover. So I'm going to be kind of, you know, a little sporadic and all over the place probably with what I have to say. And excuse the thundering noise out there. It's the county, city, state, whatever, deciding it's a good time to go ahead and meal up and uh, repave this main road out here that uh, we're two days away from school starting. And uh, there's three schools here. <laughs> we live on a three school road. So probably not the best time to start that. Probably should have done that maybe the two months we were out of school. But we'll see. Maybe they'll be done tomorrow. <laughs> Anywho, so, uh, first things first, let's talk about my um, workout from Monday, my chest workout. And uh, if you keep up with everything, my channel, all that good stuff, you know that uh, Monday I went for my one rep max long term goal, uh, flat bench press PR. Well, that's a lot to say right there, uh, 405 pound bench. And to go ahead and spoil the video, please go watch anyways, please. Uh, I did make the lift and uh, with pretty pretty much relative ease. And, uh, but I got wrote down here that I, I kind of want to talk about uh, the mental aspect of all of that and the mental, the mental aspect of having 405 pounds over your face like that. Now, those of us out here that work out, you know, we have heavy lifts that we do, and I've, I've had, you know, I've done my 500 pound deadlift. I've done a 425 pound squat. I've even done a 225, 245, 255, 75, 75, 275 pound sitting barbell shoulder press, and. Uh, you know, there's a lot of lifts out there that we have quite a bit of weight that we're moving. And uh, I even had an accident with my shoulder press where uh, I got a video on here, but you can go find it. It was pretty fun. But I was sitting down and I thought, well, why don't I use my belt and belt me to the seat so I don't move out of the seat so much. I don't like coming out of the seat when I'm pressing. And I just used a standard Dollar General dress belt. That I had, and needless to say, it it popped apart when uh, I wish it would not have. And I popped out of the seat, and my arms went back with the bar, and the bar went back behind me and the seat, you know, because I had the seat of the bench up like that. And so I'm sitting there with 200 and probably 75 pounds at the time, 70 or 75, I don't remember, and uh, <laughs> and it's like on my hair. And anyway, eventually I got out from under it and it rolled down and came down on the bench like that and bent my bar. Stupid. Anyway, things happen. But that didn't startle me or, or rattle me or, or you know, it wasn't a big mental game for whatever reason to, uh, to get over that and to, and to go on and do greater things. Uh, but the 405 pound bench press kind of was a, a mental game uh, just imagining laying there on the bench with your deadlift or your squat or whatever it might be you know above your face like that and any uh, any thing can happen now for you those of you that don't know I just got this big cage back here I just got that two weeks ago yesterday until then, I just had your standard two-post rack. And uh, no safeties, just J-hooks. 
So everything I've done up to this point has been without safeties or anyone here spotting me or anything at all. So uh, thinking about how uh, mental that was, that you know, that vision to have that much weight above my head and anything at all could happen, as my buddy John McBean can tell you, and as we've all unfortunately seen online and, you know, different people failing with, you know, bench pressing and things happen. Sorry, things happening. Anything can happen. And so uh, it just kind of started playing on my mind more and more. Like, do I want to have four plates above my head or do I want to do small plate increments, you know, that add up to 405 pounds? Because, I don't know, it was just the thought of having four, you know, eight total big plates on that bar that was just kind of mental for me and then plus the visions of things and but uh yeah so but yesterday you know I conquered that and not only did I conquer the you know that aspect of it or the vision of it but I conquered moving the weight as well so uh it it's it's kind of crazy how some of these lifts are really mentally uh almost disabling sometimes and they can really shake you and uh, make you think about things. Make you think about your life. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to touch base on that with the 405-pound uh, bench press and how it kind of affected me. Now that I've done it, uh, it's not that big a deal. You know, now that I've done it, and uh, I hope I can do it again. Now, my goal is not to continue on and see if I can do 500 or 600 or 1,000. I'm never going to get to that point because, number one, I don't have the diet. Number two, I'm 52 years old. Number three, I'm not really compelled to want to go that heavy. And number four or five, I don't know what number I'm on, but I don't do any sort of uh, performance enhancing drugs. I'm natural. I eat a little bit of food that I eat and I drink water. So, uh, you know, getting, getting to a certain stage at this point is, you know, probably not in my cards so having more of a realistic goal with the 405 pounds which I was beginning to wonder about that but uh, making realistic goals is probably better now that don't mean that I might not try 410 I might try 410 I might try 425 so I can match my squat and I'm not gonna match my deadlift at 500 <laughs> I'm not gonna do that so but anyway, I just kind of wanted to touch base on the 405 pound bench and how it affected me over the months and uh, especially taking so long to get there. And, uh, I, you know, like I mentioned before in my videos that I felt like I could have done it a year ago, but I don't have anyone to spot me and I didn't have safety arms on my old rack and all this kind of stuff. And so I just, you know, I. I, I, I had to do it in time. I had to do it when the time was right, and I got that rack because of, you know, watching accidents happen and stuff. I said, it's time for me to get a rack. Let's get it. And, you know, two weeks later, I hit my PR. So, anyhow, so our next topic here, uh, just we'll go over kind of what I've overcome as far as injuries and uh, maybe like mental the mental aspect as far as the physical I don't know if I can mention every physical thing that's wrong with me but we'll start with something that's kind of more recent and that is my carpal tunnel especially in my right hand right now these three fingers are tingling like they're gonna go to sleep and when I do go to sleep they go dead asleep and I mean to the point to where they're killing me like they feel dead so I got that going on right now and that was going against me on my lift I got to thinking, man, I better get this done because if I got to have surgery, uh, I'm going to have to take time off and then I'm going to start all over again. So, but I'm going to try and hold off on doing anything with this until uh, next summer. I'm going to kind of try and get things lined up so when we're out of school for the summer, boom, I can get something done and just, you know, go that route. Um, so we'll talk about this first. Uh, let's talk about my shoulders again those of you that have seen these seen my videos you've heard and seen this a million times I hurt I hurt one shoulder at one friend's house bench pressing 
I heard another shoulder at another friend's house bench pressing. We're talking early 2000s, way early. And uh, we're not talking about just a little pain. I was going in for surgery on my right one. Uh, I was supposed to have surgery on it like on a Monday. But over the weekend before, I said, screw it, I'm going to bench press. And so my friend was there at the time. He was my boss and my brother-in-law. Or, no, he's my ex-brother-in-law at the time. But uh, he was there. And uh, I went down with the bar. I think I had 355, 3 something on there, 380. I can't remember what it was. It was a lot of weight. But uh, I came down with the bar and my shoulder went pop. And I went back up with it and I put it on the uprights and I sat up and I was like, oh my God, I can move my arm. There's no pain. I can move my arm. And I was jumping up and down and happy. And and then like that Monday, I went in and I talked to the doctor. I said, I don't think I need surgery. I'm, I'm moving. Uh, I'm able to move. So I bench pressed and broke up whatever happened there. But over the, over the years still, you know, I'd get a, a discomfort in one of my shoulders at least to the point to where you're like, ah, ah, ah. you know, it's just, it's almost like a, I don't know how to explain it. Like not a cramp, but it's that kind of intense pain that you're getting. And it's like, ugh, and you can't even move and breathe and you're just grunting. And, and, uh, you know, I'd go through spells of that once in a while. And, uh, so, you know, and, and all that settles down eventually. And then in, uh, the winter time of 2015, uh, I decided to try my hand at disc golf, where you throw the little disc into the baskets a mile away. And if you know me, you know I'm going to go all out. And uh, so the very first day I'm out there, you know, throwing like Hulk. And instantly at that point, I could feel I'm getting some discomfort. But stupid me, I keep going that day and keep going harder and throwing hard and then I go back another day and I go back another day and another day and within like uh, less than a week's time this shoulder was completely felt ripped apart all the tissue like I had scar tissue coming on everything was ripped apart and I was going out there a month later with and standing by the basket going like this literally flicking just trying to have some fun that's how bad it was and that's how stupid I am. I just kept going and going. and uh, But I, I've not really had it looked at. But I know it's scar tissue. I know it's ripped. You know, I know I know all that happened. You can just tell when you've had enough problems and stuff. And you just use your common sense. You can kind of tell. It wasn't bone related. It's uh, soft tissue related. So it was just all ripped apart. And you can feel the lumps under my skin. Probably where, where all the inflammation and the scar tissue and all that is. You literally see it sometimes so extreme pain for a long time from 2015 on and in 2016 is whenever I got my bicycle and I started riding my bike because I had to do something I've always done something and so I had to do something so I started cycling did that for five and a half years and uh and in between and and, and in 2015 after all that I decided that I so I'm going back a little bit. So I decided, man, I got to work out. I got to do something. So I went and got a gym membership. And I was only able to go and do very, very little because it was just hurting so bad. And uh, it, it, it just wasn't even worth me going. So eventually, a year later, I canceled my contract with them. And then I started riding my bike in 2016. February 11th, I got my bike. February 13th. Uh, was my first bike ride yes I remember so I cycled for five and a half years and I was also walking and uh, doing stuff like that so uh, eventually in 2021 uh, I decided to jump back in the uh, the workout game I was like well I can't do anything heavy or anything and I don't expect to but Maybe I'll get a adjustable bench and some, you know, quick adjustable dumbbells. You know, the kind you turn the handle or things or whatever. Some kind of quick. I can get a little bit of strength training in my life along with my cycling. Well, shopped around for that and 
long story short, I ended up with a lot of stuff. Why? Because I woke up one day and my shoulder was completely not hurting at all. So as soon as I noticed that, that's when I started shopping for uh, more typical barbell and, you know, stuff like that. So that's my story with my shoulders and off and on they've kind of got a little bit inflamed here and there since I've been working out again, but uh, I've worked through it, obviously. <clears throat> so um, that's my carpal tunnel, my shoulders, and also my neck uh, is not great. I've had 12 pieces of drywall fall directly on my forehead and about kill me. But uh, yeah, so there's a neck problem. Got my back problem, uh, pulling concrete. Hello, beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I got my back problem uh, when I was 25. I guess I should have started with my back. I was 25 or 26. I always just say 25 because it's a roundabout number. Roundabout number? I don't know. So I was a young lad and uh, we were just doing a simple concrete pad. That's the only thing I can trace it back to. It's not like I was pulling concrete and instantly, oh my god, my back. But it, it just happened like maybe the next day or the next couple of days later, whatever it was, and boom, my, my life was changed forever with my back. And it's still the exact same way. So, uh, my back is horrible. I've had CAT scans, MRIs, ultrasounds. I've been to chiropractors. I've been, I've had the ring dinger done. If you guys know what that is, if you've seen it online, I've had that done. I've, you know, babied it. I've, I've got little shock pads that I can stick on there myself and ice and heat packs and all kind of different stuff. So my back is pretty screwed and they can't seem to find out what's wrong with it. But something's wrong with it because I've wished I was dead since I was 25. So, uh, and that's initially what started my depression was my back. Uh, come to find out after thinking about things one day, some, some time back, because I've had other things in my life that really set off my depression. But technically it started when I hurt my back. So got that I mentioned that I got whatever's going on here whatever that is and uh, when it was inflamed or doing whatever it is that it's worse I couldn't even let the sheets or covers touch my skin I couldn't let my shirt touch it I had to sleep like this so nothing would touch my skin and I went to the ER and only thing that they said was it could be the nerves from your back Possibly the ones that I guess attach over here to the front even. And uh, maybe they're inflamed. It's something something to do with that or something. And uh, so that's where it's been left at. But it's, uh, it's still to this day a pain. And I get cramps right there. And throughout the day it's just sitting there jumping. Doing this all the time. And it's just a very annoying kind of pain still. It's not as intense as it used to be. But it's still very annoying, and especially when it cramps up, that's a bad cramp. You can literally see it go, <laughs> just like that. So, anywho, we got that. Uh, we got my hips. I had perfectly fine hips. And on my bicycle one day, I was coming down a hill and turned on to another road, and I slid and fell down on my right side. And, well, that's where my right hip went wrong, and it was out for over a year. I didn't go to the, to the doctor or nothing about it. But it was that sharp, intense, holy crap pain that you couldn't even engage it. Uh, you couldn't even engage your hip, your leg, do anything hardly at all. Or it would, it could drop you that quick. <laughs> so uh, I dealt with that for a year. And then it wasn't too long after I was sitting on the kitchen counter. And I, I thought, oh, I'm going to stretch. So I put my left foot up on my right leg and pushed my left knee down like so. And boom. Oh, oh, oh. Exact same pain, exact same. <laughs> so, uh, but that lasted only a couple of months or so and it finally uh, took care of itself. 
but the right hand side is still messed up it still flares up and it's the reason partly the reason why I can't go heavy and do squats like I want to do anymore because not only does it hurt my hip to where it's just really bad it goes all the way up the side of my back or the side you know this side kind of here and it's just a big bunch of a mess going on so uh, my knees are not great again I was in construction for a lot of years and up and down ladders and jumping off walls and jumping off big stacks of lumber and up and down here and up and down there and plus I was always active and running around and playing basketball and doing stuff and running around with my kids and doing things and so my knees aren't great but they're the least of my worries and the same thing with my ankles my ankles are naturally bad I can just be standing there and fall down and twist my ankles and they'll be that big but I haven't done that in a long 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 time and I hope to keep that a, a, even a longer time uh, that is some of the worst pain that you'll go through Whew, boy it's horrible <laughs> so uh, we have that uh, I know there's something else I'm going to forget. Of course, I do have like arthritis and stuff in my wrist and carpal tunnel. I know I got it in both hands, but this one here is like really bad now. So my elbows are not are not what I'd call, what I'd call bad. I do have a slight symptoms of golfer's elbow, tennis elbow. I did hyperextend or whatever you want to call this elbow one time, hitting a heavy bag uh, years ago. I was too far out from the bag and I actually missed the bag and I swung really hard and my arm just like that and and my elbow was you know pretty sore pretty uh, painful for uh, years for a long time and uh, plus working construction didn't help it and never got any rest you know I'm carrying big you know 12 inch 14 16 18 inch blocks or whatever they are and pulling concrete and lumber and building and lifting and shingling and all that stuff so a lot of years not getting any rest uh, for that but th they're okay now they'll periodically just kind of mess with me and sometimes if I kind of pop them a little bit you know kind of try to make them pop uh, it'll kind of relieve it a little bit but uh, anyway I think that's a the biggest part of my uh, injuries and my stuff that I that I've kind of had to work around and work through uh, not just recently but throughout the years you know uh, since I've been going you know my whole life I've got to work through things uh, a lot but I know this is a long video but it, it's kind of interesting I guess to kind of learn about people I like to learn about people and chit chat and so um, oh so I kind of want to go through uh, in my video yesterday in my bench bench press video I I mentioned a, a buddy of mine uh, that I have online on YouTube uh, John MacBean his uh, channel is MacBean Scottish Fitness I mentioned him uh, you know as you know the video is kind of dedicated to him and this lift is kind of dedicated to him a little bit there and uh, but but I want to make sure that I mention some more people because I actually do have a nice little community with some pretty good people I think I don't know you guys personally I just have to go by what I see our communication is back and forth here and from what I can tell I have some pretty good people in my community here and uh, so let's go ahead and look here and I'm gonna call out a, a, a several names not in any particular order it's just how it's lined up here so uh, Big J's Knives he's always supportive uh, of course he's he's known for his knives his channel and all that but he does work out a big strong dude so we're gonna kind of make quick of this. So Big J's knives, uh, we has we have Last Chance knives. Uh, he's also into knives, but he also works out, and and uh, he's an older guy like me. And Big J's only a few years younger than me, and Mac Bean is uh, ten years older than me. So uh, Last Chance knives, and uh, Grave Strong. He's a beastly young lad. We'll call him a young lad just because he's uh, he's quite a bit younger than me but he's awesome runner boy he's way over in England somewhere or I Ireland whatever uh, I can't remember but uh, sorry runner boy but I am mentioning you and uh, runner boys uh, a good guy he works out hard he's consistent always going doing things and uh, appreciate him 
uh, Home Gym Hacks and Reviews. He's a, he's a great guy. He works out all the time. He's had some amazing home gyms. He's kind of downsized, but not really. He's mostly running Powertech stuff now, and they're his sponsor, I guess, kind of, sort of now. Or he, or he wants them to be he's working together or something like that. But a uh, great guy, and uh, uh, he, uh, he uh, sorry, I'm skipping my brain here. He has uh, type 2 diabetes, and, uh, you know, he don't let that stop him. He, he looks amazing, and uh, he works out all the time, and he's a good guy. And we got Sheiky Baby. He's fantastic. I love him whenever he has his kid on, Aiden. And, uh, you know, you can see Aiden in the back doing stuff or hear him clapping. Uh, Aiden is a, a special needs, I guess, has autism. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Shiki, you can correct me if I'm wrong if you see this. But uh, Shiki Baby, that's his name. His channel name is Shiki Baby. <laughs> uh, he's a great guy. He does a lot of push-ups and different dips and different kind of flips and flops and headstands and all kind of crazy stuff. And posts some uh, pictures of some good food, too. He's a great guy. Uh, let's go to Wilson G. Man, what can you say about Wilson G? Uh, he is... He is the most impressive deadlifter I've ever seen, and he claims to be natural, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree that he's natural. Uh, but he lifts like he's not natural. I'm, that's some impressive deadlifts that Wilson G does, and uh, wow, uh, really good, really good stuff. We'll go ahead and mention Clarksville Barbell Club. Uh, he don't communicate a whole lot on on uh, YouTube with me, but we we. We have periods where we do, and I think it's. I think he's probably real busy, and he's trying to open a gym in Clarksville. They're building it and all that kind of stuff, so he's busy, and he has a, a at least one kid that I know of that competes in weightlifting and all that stuff, and he lifts all the time, and so they're busy. But he's a he's a really cool guy and just uh, very knowledgeable about stuff, and I'm, I wish him all the best with his new gym. If they'll get it done, they need to get it done. Uh, we have the same guy that I mentioned a while ago, LCK Strength Training. That's Last Chance Knives. He made a separate channel just for working out uh, because he wanted his other channel to be focused mostly around knives. So, uh, yeah, LCK Strength Training. Please check him out. Again, he's a great guy. Uh, my, he's right at my age and uh, very impressive to watch him do some work. Uh, we have Miss Worm. I got a woman on here. I have a female. And uh, she's over in, uh, I'll say England as well. I'm bad with this stuff. I'm not a, I'm not into the world maps and stuff. But we'll say she's over in England. Uh, she does stuff like uh, narrating books and writing short stories and long stories, I'm sure. And, and she does some really nice reading. She has an amazing voice to listen to. If you like stories and that kind of stuff read to you, go check out her channel, Miss Worm. Uh, we have Bad Body Not So Fit. Uh... He does a lot of push-ups and dips and different stuff like that as well. Uh, very knowledgeable on that kind of stuff and, and other things as well. Uh, seems like a really good guy. And then we got the man, the myth, the legend, Trey Engel. Uh, he's, he's a Larson Press master. That's what I'll call him these days. And not just a Larson Press, but he, he does reverse... Uh, bench pressing now reverse grip where you hold like this crazy he's doing really good on that so he's he's a bench press master uh, you don't see him do a whole lot of other stuff he might do it uh, off camera but mostly he just posts his bench pressing very impressive guy just straight to the point he don't do a lot of fluff like I do in my videos and uh, very good stuff very good stuff uh, we got Boston Blade Reviews. Uh, of course, he's about knives as well. And uh, he don't really post anything but knives. I don't hear him talk about really working out or anything. He might do some working out. But I know I know he also works hard. And, and plus he has his knives that he, that he uh, does and stuff. So uh, anyway, so yeah, he's, he's a good guy. Really good, solid guy. Um, I'm trying to see who all I got here. Uh... Oh, we had him, but he's not on here anymore. Yada, yada, yada. And we have that one motivated guy. He don't post very often, but when he does, he's making great progress. 
and I wish him the best. Uh, the best. He's a young guy too, in SAF Athletics. Uh, he uh, he don't post a whole lot, but he's he's kind of one of those that'll stop for a while and then post, then stop for a while and post. And he's super strong guy, same age as me. Very very much into all the basic lifts, and plus he does other like events, you know, throwing things, whatever all that kind of stuff is, where you throw stuff. He throws things. So uh, I've named pretty much everyone that that you know really kind of takes part and and uh, everything. I hope I did uh, for the most part anyway. Uh, it's just a, a lot of people that I wanted to give a little bit of thanks and a shout out to. And for those of you that have my back, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, the online trolls and all that kind of stuff, I appreciate it. Uh, always let me know because together we can finally get these people knocked out. At least to some degree. Maybe. Uh, let's talk about uh, more potential goals. Uh, rather heavy or or not. Or reps and sets, etc. So if you follow my channel for the last three years and a few months. Uh, I've set goals. Main goals. And then along the way I've set other goals uh, to reach as well. So uh, every goal that I have set, I have reached. I've done it all from deadlifting 405 pounds, 10 reps, to doing 315 for 20 reps, to doing 225 for 30 reps, for bench pressing 225 for 24 reps. Now I'm not done with that. I could go on a little higher than that maybe. To doing 315 for 10 reps that I finally got like a month ago, finally. Uh, to doing my big 405 to doing everything shoulder presses like uh, you know the 100 pound dumbbells I can shoulder press those I can still do those I can still uh, I've reached a, a milestone with my barbell shoulder pressing when I did the 275 and just countless countless little Countless little goals to go with all my big goals. So uh, they, they've, they've helped to keep me going and keep driving me forward all this time. So years ago when I worked out in the 90s and all in the earlier 2000s up to 2010, uh, into early 2011, but I was pretty much done by the end of 2010. Uh, all that time that I worked out, I didn't really have goals, you know? Uh, not not real true goals and uh, my workout was all over the place and I wasn't consistent and persistent and doing things right and all this kind of stuff and this time coming back in you know I was just working out you know I started back in uh, early 2021 and uh, kind of starting out I didn't really have any goals I just wanted to work out again so I started working out again and then before long I started well I want to do this and I want to do this I want to do this so all these goals that I've set for myself and that I got some inspiration from other people out there that I've mentioned uh, you know uh, it, it just it helps to drive you through to the next workout and gives you something to do something to look forward to and then if you can if you feel like you want to you up it again you you know maybe do more on that so uh, you I, I think I think growing up and being older and looking at things how I look at things now and experiencing what I've experienced working out, I think you need to have some sort of goal, you know. Uh, I, I think it just helps to drive you and, and uh, to help give you more of that reason to get in that gym and do what you're supposed to do. So we'll end it on that one. Uh... So talk about all my bench lifts and how it might help you in your own journey and let you see where you're at. Uh, that's kind of a, an outline, kind of a thing of a... I had a guy ask me a question about um, my lifts, about my bench press. I'll see if I can find it over here. He might be on my other channel. No, here it is. So uh, a guy asked me a few hours back... Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what did your progression look like? I'm currently able to hit 315 for 6 reps. I'm aiming for 10 before I make the push to 405. So that, that question right there got me to thinking, 
about stuff and what I, I, I well I don't yeah I can I can tell you what I replied back I'll just reply I'll tell you what I replied back as far as just pertaining to this question I said as far as my 315 goes I've been able to get eight and nine on regular for quite some time now finally about a month ago or so I hit 10 reps I can hit 300 for 10 reps I think I've hit it for 11 a little while back I can hit 355 for three 365 for 2, 225 for 24, 275 for 15. It takes time for me. I felt I could have hit 405 like a year ago, but I didn't have anyone to spot me, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and I told him, just keep on grinding. Some days are good. Some days are not so good. But eventually, if you want to, you know, if you want it, uh, you're going to get it. So... Uh, that, that's just how it is in my mind uh, as far as my bench, bench press goes you know you gotta you can't just you can't just go for those heavy weights because you're not building up the foundation for the body uh, to reach those heavy weights and you gotta be able to reach some heavier reps and weights to be able to reach that higher goal uh, in my humble opinion like it's good to be able to do 300 pounds for 10 reps. It's good to be able to do 315 for 10 reps. It's good to be able to do 275 for 15, 225 for 20 plus. You know, it's, it's good to be able to do that because it's helping to build the foundation that you need to be able to drive those higher weights. It's nothing that I can truly explain. It's nothing any of you can truly explain. It's just kind of a feeling. It's just kind of how you feel like it really works. Like, it would be difficult to just sit here and, and say, you know, yeah, hit your one rep max every day and see what you can do. Okay, well, today I got 300. Well, next week I might get 305 and 310 and then 300. But you might not make it past, say, 325 because you've run out of that power, that strength. And that power, I think, comes from doing all the reps and the time under the weight. And that... And that helps to push for the larger amounts of weights. I, I, it's hard to explain, but that's just kind of how I'm feeling about it in my brain. So, uh, just kind of going over a few things. And, uh, you know, as far as what we're doing here on the Body Beatdown, just because I'm technically done with all of my goals don't mean, you know, it's just smooth sailing for here uh, from here. Uh you know, there, there's always more to do. There's always a challenge with doing more reps of a weight or doing more sets with a weight or doing some sort of a different exercise or activity, which I've had plans to do for the past three years and a few months, but still haven't made the the, the purchase or the, the fines. It's kind of like buying, getting my heavy bag a while back. I finally got a heavy bag, but I've wanted a heavy bag again for since I started working out again in early 2021. I had one years ago, and I wanted another one. I've wanted one all this time, and I just got that one just a couple months back or so. So anyway, uh, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep doing things, and that's whether or not I have little troll uh, trolling my videos and still in my my content and putting it on this channel and anyway i'm not gonna get into all that <laughs> uh, low life anyway um so yeah we're not done we're gonna keep going like i said my bench press might not stop at 405 i might try to work my way to 425 i don't see me going any further than that because i'm at a point in my life where i don't need that i don't really feel like i'm gonna accomplish anything what am i gonna accomplish now well i don't know you know, I've already set my goal. I'm happy with that. The same thing, the same thing with my deadlift at 500 pounds. I never thought, hmm, let's see if I can do 510. It, it just didn't really hit me because I don't want to. You know, uh, like I said, I got a lot of injuries. I'm not a spring chicken anymore, even though I don't put a lot of focus on age. You know, some things do apply. Uh, so we're going to keep going, guys. And, uh trying to push the limits on some things and enjoy ourselves and like I said I hope that I can incorporate kind of some new activities 
pretty soon. I'm always online looking on Marketplace for some stuff. I don't want to say anything, and I haven't wanted to say anything for over three years now because I want it to be a surprise for whatever reason. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I uh, appreciate everybody being here. If you made it this far, I uh, appreciate that. Uh, I think it's good to, to, you know, talk to people on your channel and uh, get to learn things about people. And, uh, you know, I, I just I, that's just kind of how I am. I'm kind of one of those... I guess maybe old school guys that like to talk and uh, you know have conversations and stuff. There's a lot of us out there. I think once you get to a certain age, you like to do that. So uh, anyway, guys, uh, if you've stuck around this long, and I hope you have, if not, well, uh, shame on you. So uh, maybe like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff to the body beat down. That's me, Michael, your incredible host. And uh, stick around, guys. We're not done. Get up. Get out. Get red. Do it to it. And we'll see you next time on the Body Beatdown, guys. See y'all later. Get up, get out, get red, and do it to it.